welcome. Thanks for, for being here. Um, we're going to talk to you about how we use progressive delivery with Argo rollouts at Adobe, the things that, how we set it up, um, what went well, what things we did, didn't go so well, some issues we found on the way, and so hopefully you can get some ideas for your everyday um, Argo rollouts usage if you are not using it already. So, my name is Natalia. I'm working as a software developer engineer at Adobe. I love maths and coding, and this is my second talk at the KubeCon. The uh, previous one was in Chicago. Uh, so, yeah, glad to be here. And I'm Carlos. I'm a principal scientist at, uh, also at the same product at Adobe. And I've been uh, contributing to a lot of open source projects. Um, and one of them I started was uh, the Kubernetes Jenkins plugin that was 10 years. Uh, last December, so it's been a, a long way. So a small short introduction about experience manager, so you understand a little bit what uh, what are the problems we are facing. Adobe Experience Manager is a system in the distributed Java OS GI application that uses a lot of open source components from the Apache Software Foundation and obviously all, all a bunch of other open source uh, libraries there, and. A particularity is that it has a huge market for extension developers, so it's like a platform where people are writing code that is deployed, and we deploy that code into the cloud as part of our product. Uh, we are running AEM on Kubernetes as part of this cloud service, and it's running on Azure. We have more than 45 clusters across multiple regions because it's a content management system. Customers want to run as close as possible to their, to their customers. So we have US, Europe, Australia, Singapore, Japan, India, and any new region that customers ask for, we try to, to adopt. And we have a dedicated team uh, managing clusters for multiple products. So we, we don't uh, have all the permissions like you would have in a cluster that you run yourself. Uh, there's a team that builds the clusters, keeps them updated, and we have limited permissions on those clusters. So that's also another um, particularity. On AEM, we have multiple teams building services in different languages, and we try to have, uh, have a, an, an approach of you build it, you run it. We use a lot of APIs and a lot of Kubernetes operator patterns to, in order to, to, to build these services and to add uh, functionality to the main AEM uh, core application, the Java application. On the scale we have, so we have 17,000 uh, environments, what we call uh, Adobe Experience Management environments. This translates to over 100,000 deployment objects, so Kubernetes deployment objects, over 100,000. More than 6,000 namespaces. And we are already doing, or we, we've been doing uh, progressive rollouts at the environment level for, for some years already. This meaning uh, we can roll out changes to specific namespaces or percentage of namespaces in a controlled manner uh, with something that we, we built and we created ourselves. But the, the reason to, to, to look for something else was how do we avoid issues in production uh, not just during tests. I mean, I think everybody looking at progressive delivery, that's what, what we're looking for. Okay, tests are not enough. We want to check that uh, things in production are working fine. We also have to consider issues introduced by our Adobe code, things that we write, but also things that customers write. So if, uh, if we make a mistake or a customer makes a mistake, we want to protect the production environments from that. And we have to do it for 17,000 unique services. Full end-to-end -end testing is expensive. I mean, we do end-to-end uh, -end testing in, at a big scale, but obviously as, as things grow, this becomes uh, costlier and it takes more time. Also doesn't cover all the corner cases that you may think. I mean, testing is for things you know that may fail. I think progressive delivery is for things you don't know that they may, may fail. That's a, that's a good analogy. And when we have 
uh, testing that fails in, or, or production rollouts that fail, we have, to we have to do the analysis of, is this a problem with our AM release? Is this a problem with the customer code? Is just a temporary flakiness issue? And this is all costly and, and adds, uh, adds time. So it's time consumed. Releases can get delayed because uh, there's, we detect something rolling out to production. Now we have to stop the train, look at what happened. Is this something that is blocking the release or not? And also, if, you, if we don't detect it and we roll something that is bad, is broken, 100% uh, of the traffic for a particular customer could be affected. So here we, I guess you all know, uh, we are, that's why we're moving to Argo rollouts. That's why we're all here, right? So anybody using Argo rollouts already? Yes? Just a few people, okay. Um, I'm not gonna enter in a lot of the details because I, I've seen the other talks also went into the very, how to configure it, how to set it up. I'm, I'm just gonna go a bit more high level on how we did it and why we did it. So we set up Canary deployments with automatic rollback. Uh, basic, based on real-world traffic and error metrics and using these metrics from Prometheus, metrics that we already had for alerts. So we are feeding this now to Argo rollouts. One interesting case was also, okay, rollouts works with one deployment. What if I have two deployments that go together? We have two deployments that we call author and publish. So author is used by people creating content, publish is kind of serving that content. If there's an issue, with any of those, we want to roll back both of them. So you can do this with Argo rollouts by using the same a metric that includes both deployments, and then Argo rollouts will see if the metric fails in either of them, it's gonna roll back both. Because Argo rollouts only looks at one specific deployment, but when you use a metric that includes both of them, it will uh, roll back both. And in the future, we can consider also Helm rollback because every time we do a new deployment or a new release with Helm, uh, maybe we don't want to just roll back the deployment. Maybe we want to go and look at, okay, uh, Argo has decided, Argo Rollouts has decided this is broken. Let's, let's go and roll back the whole Helm chart so we don't have a mixture of newer Helm chart with old deployments. The way we did it, uh, so we have a rollout object and we have, uh, we use what's uh, a workload ref in the rollout. This way we can point to an existing deployment as we roll out. And we don't have to delete the, the deployment objects. We just create the new rollout object and in, this is in Helm and we point the rollout to the deployment object. We configure the rollout we use the labeling uh, feature on rollout, so all pods get the label roll equals stable, new pods get the label roll equals canary, so you can uh, have metrics for both of them separately, and you can look only at the canary um, metrics. And you could also in the future, I mean, you could have traffic going only to the canary if you wanted, because they have separate labels, you could have separate services, separate ingress, uh, you could, this would be interesting if you want to deploy and say, oh, I want to look at preview at, at the Canary before uh, promoting. On the analysis template, which is the part that is going to decide is this a rollout, a successful rollout or not, uh, we look at the, um, uh, okay, it's in the next slide, the metric, but we look at the success condition that uh, there's less than 10% of that. All, all of that, all of this here means just 10% of the the metric is less than 10%. So 10% of the of the metric, which is an errors metric, we point the, to the Prometheus server service running on the namespace, and the metric is called request error ratio in five minutes, uh, pod label, the tier. This is where we use both tiers, uh, both uh, deployments. So these are metrics coming from a deployment called author and a deployment called publish. So we can say, if either of those fail, uh, roll it back. And because we, do, we have two rollout objects, one for author, one for publish, if any of the metrics fail for the other one, it's also gonna roll it back. So both of them would be rolled back at the same time. So 
What is good with Argo rollouts? Automatic rollback on high error rates. That's the key feature that we are looking for. We don't want to halt the train. We don't want to break a customer. And this allows us to do these non-blocking rollouts across environments and then investigating what were the issues. So we get alerts when the rollout fails and we can look at those later and it reduce blast radius. So if we make a mistake or a customer makes a mistake, only a percentage of the traffic is gonna get affected. And also we get more frequent releases. We validate this with real traffic and at the end of the day, more velocity, which if you look at the Dora metrics and things like that, that's what makes uh, a team um, beyond the top performers. What is bad? about rollouts, so the migration requires orchestration to avoid that. So this means when you create a new rollout uh, and you have a deployment, even when you use borderload ref to reference a deployment that already exists, uh, you have, now you have pods running at the same time, both owned by the deployment and the rollout. And this is a problem when you have thousands of services. Typically, people would go and say, oh, when my rollout is successful, I scale down the deployment, and you just have to do this once, once you migrate. Uh, but when you have tens of thousands, that's a bit harder. So one colleague on our team, she uh, contributed this PR, so you don't have to care about this that much anymore. So automatically, we'll then scale down the deployment after migration to rollouts. And this PR is gonna be released on rollouts 1.7, so it's not out yet, as I checked before the talk, and it's not out yet. Uh, but this will allow you to do uh, add a new field uh, with the scale down attribute on the, on the workload ref. And you can say, scale down never, so the, the old deployment is never scaled down, so that was uh, how it was working before. And on success, so after the rollout becomes successful, uh, the, the, the deployment is scaled down or progressively. As, as new replicas are coming in from the rollout, uh, replicas from the deployment are getting, uh, are getting deleted. So things that were so-so. For us, uh, we, are, we started with simple rollouts, watch for the graded statuses, and we noticed things like, okay, Prometheus is not reachable. So that's some things you have to account for. When Prometheus is not reachable, Argo rollouts is going to mark your deployment as, as, as degraded. And the other one that we realized uh, was up, uh, upgrades with object deletion. One thing we use a lot well, or we try to use more, <laughs> is immutable resources, immutable config maps and secrets. Uh, when you create a config map and a secret, you can say immutable equals true. This may, uh, signals the Kubernetes API to say, okay, this is not gonna change. I don't need to watch for changes. Because every time Kubernetes watches for an object, it's creating memory, it's using memory on the API server. And this, at the scale, this creates high load on the API server. So one thing we, we were doing, okay, let's use immutable objects for some things that we don't wanna change. And we know is, they're not gonna change. And what happens, the, the, the typical pattern with Helm is every time you make a change to the secret or the config map, you have to change the name. And you would use a SHA of the contents. That's what a Helm pattern. So every time you change the content, you're gonna get a new secret and the old secret is deleted because Helm is gonna do that. Now, what happens uh, is, uh, imagine in this example, Helm does an upgrade, uh, the new secret is created, the old secret is deleted, so the one is created, the zero is deleted. If the new pods fail to start because of the rollout, now uh, Argo keeps the old deployment running and it scales down the new one, but the old deployment uh, cannot create more new pods because the secret no longer exists. So as soon as the existing pods are recycled, you get an outage. So that's one, one tricky thing that we had to, we, we are still figuring out how to, how to change, but that's something that you, you need to have into account. This is not a problem just with rollouts, just rollouts make it, makes it worse, 
because the rollout can take more time than a normal deployment, but is uh, something to watch for. Would you need good metrics? Uh, you need to account for canary stable labels on the metrics. You don't want to check metrics of the stable deployment, so the stable pods. You want to just look at the uh, canary uh, pods. What happens when you have environments with low traffic, right? If you don't get this metric, maybe you assume that it's successful, but then when you have, you start getting traffic, then you realize that something is broken. So that's, that's also a tricky part. And very annoyingly rollout, by adopting the rollout object, uh, now you need suddenly to change RAM books, tooling, training, because now you are going to have deployment objects that are going to be scaled to zero. So if somebody is not aware of that, uh, you have to, uh, they can go mistakenly go and say, oh, I need to scale up this deployment because it's zero, right? And then now you have a mix of, of both things. We're going to show you a little uh, demo. We have to record it to speed it up. Uh, let's see. All right, so in this demo, actually, we're going to show you how we did it, how Argo rollouts on our environment. So here you can see that we are spinning up a new, well, actually, no, it's you can not. Playing. No, it's not playing. It's so. Oh, OK. No, sorry. Uh, One sec. Technical problems is not a no. real demo, but Here. always demo Another time. Another window. Yeah. No matter what you do, it's always demo time. <laughs> yeah. Now. All right. Uh, oops. Go back to the beginning. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now, <laughs> so we have this recording for an environment where we started a new uh, environment. So you can see actually the revision 22 is a new canary rollout. So on the other side of the screen, you can see the pods. So we had two pods running for, for the previous version and a new pod which is starting up. I just made the recording so we can just make it faster. So once this, yeah, there you go. The pod is initialization. So actually, we are deploying a new version which suddenly it contains a bug. So what is going to happen is that we have a URL which is returning 500 errors. As soon as it is ready, which is going to be like in a little bit, there you go because I made it. So um, now behind the scenes, we are receiving requests, which are returning 500. For this demo, we just did a lot of requests, right, uh, for this endpoint because it's a demo environment. And then we have the analysis run, which is the running. You can see it on the 22 version, um, which is checking uh, what is the help for the, that Prometheus metric that Carlos was pointing out. So now we can see we have one error for the analysis run. There you go. But I will show you later, we have a limit of, hey, with one error, we're OK. With more than one error, then we failed. So just Argo continues, right? It starts the new pod. It says, all right, I have a new error, but it is fine. As soon as I have two, there you go. Then it is marked as degraded. Here at this point, Argo is going to say, all right, the new deployment failed. I mark it as degraded, and then I'm going to start um, doing the rollback to the previous stable version, which is in this example is the previous one, the 21. So now, uh, yeah, the 21 version is going to, to be, well, actually, at the top of the screen, this is a big screen, but we can also say that the rollout aborted <laughs> is very high. All right, because the metric actually make a, made a, an error. So now you can see that, again, little by little, just doing another rollout, the new revision, the 22, is going to be scaled down. It is terminating. And the new one, uh, well, the previous one, sorry, the version 21, is going to spin up new pods because that is the healthy one. So we are making a rollback. On the other side, you can see also the new pods coming up. Uh, you, can, you can just see there. So this is how Argo uh, works. I mean, this was a little demo just because we make it shorter, but this is a 
quite enough time to make the rollout and to detect that everything, hey, it failed, then you need to roll it back. So now if we go back, let's see, for example, to the slides. This is the analysis run that we saw in the demo. So actually here you can see that there were six points where four of them m were marked as succeed. Actually you can see they are not a number. That's because, I mean, Prometheus starts to get the data and to ingest it little by little. So you, that's something you need to take care to configure and to set up the proper values because actually you need to take that delay of Prometheus, right? And then we had two failures and since we configure to mark it as failed, as soon as we have more than one failed or error, then it was marked as degraded. Okay, so to sum it up, uh, progressive delivery, we think it's a great idea. Rollouts, Argo rollouts, great implementation. There's only a few things that you have to have into account when, when you adopt it. And hopefully you got some ideas here. And well, thank you for being here. And you can, I think you can leave feedback in the, using that QR on the SCAD page. If you have some questions. Um, yes, I have a question. Just, okay. Uh, I wanted to come back to the uh, issues you wanted to iron out, um, especially the issue with the config map missing that you mentioned. So if you yep. name config maps, right, and you um, need to roll back, the old config map is gone. We have exactly the same problems. Uh, we, we have found a solution. Maybe, let me share it with you and see if it would work for you. So we've written some automation that basically retains the old config maps in Git. So after you render using Helm and you get the new config map with a new name, we don't actually replace the old one. Mm -hmm. We save the old ones as well. Yep. And last 10 or whatever number you want to have, right? So they all show up as synced in Argo. So later, you know, when we deploy again, we just remove the oldest one, uh, just leave the, 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 um, the last mm -hmm. 10. And that way, we don't have this problem. We can now uh, roll back and... Uh, we don't have this, this error. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's multiple ways to solve this. Uh, even we're not using uh, Argo CD for, for where we are using Argo rollouts, but you can uh, do a, you can keep the old ones for a bit. You can label them. You can have a Helm. You can instruct Helm not to delete them, and you could have maybe a post update job in Helm where you delete the old ones so you don't keep them around. I mean, there's, there's multiple ways. There's also, you can do it with an operator. There's, there's some ways, but you just need to be aware. It's a, it's a bit of the, you have to deprecate things before deleting them in case this, this happens, yeah. And any one of these solutions you would uh, recommend um, um, of, of the ones that you mentioned? Um, we are not sure yet where we're going to do, but uh, because one of the other options we have is to put secrets together instead of having many uh, immutable secrets. We could have uh, just one secret that is not immutable, then that doesn't overload the API so much, and maybe that's fine. But we probably going to, because we have an operator, in our use case, we have another operator that triggers these things the Helm upgrades and all that, and we can do the deletion from there. So that could be another option for us. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, hi, thank you for the talk. I wanted to ask if you have faced any drawbacks uh, using the workload ref to the deployment? Mm, not other than the problems with the upgrading and having to scale down the deployment, that was, that was nothing. Okay, that's great no. to know. Thank you. Okay. I, don't know. I think maybe one more? Yes? Yes, hi. Uh, great talk. Um, I have one question with manual feature gating or uh, developer access because I presume you have many developers deploying in many different ways uh, or maybe they're using a model, but I can also suspect that maybe some of them would like to see the visual Argo rollout UI and then see how it's working and maybe manually allow for the next analysis or the next phase to happen. Is that something you are using? And if so, is it any good? We, um, the, 
user experience, let's say, part of it, that would be interesting, but we are doing this for thousands of deployments, so having, going and looking at, oh, this one, is, how is this one doing? That's not gonna fix anything. Uh, but yes, we are storing the value on our, on the, we have an operator that kind of overarching operator that looks at the Helm operates and Argo, and that operator is getting the status, and that status is being shipped, is being stored, and it can be observed by other tools that are triggering it. Oh, so, so we get the status field with all the information, so. Yeah, we, we grab the information from the rollout status, put it in the other operator in a way that it makes sense for our clients, for the clients triggering the operates. Yeah, so you get, essentially get a timeline. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, very nice. All right. Well, I think that's time. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.